Hey guys, what's going on? I am Sam Crack, and right here is the flooded donor Chevy Spark. I bought this car with the sole intention of harvesting parts from it to rebuild my Domino's Pizza DXP car. As you see, I've already taken off a lot of the body panels in the front and I've grabbed a few pieces from the interior. When I bought this car, I had very low expectations. As a flood car, I figured most of the things wouldn't work, especially drivetrain items and mostly electronics in the interior. And I was proven completely wrong. When I opened the door and discovered the really low water line, I figured that a lot of this car was gonna work. And after thoroughly going through everything, making sure it was okay to start without damaging anything, this car worked pretty much 98%. The only thing that I found broken on it was the fact that the shifter was completely locked in park. I had to go and break the lock mechanism to get it into all the other gears. Now it will move forward, backward, and it drove perfectly. But as I've already disclosed to you guys, this car has a problem title, a title that could never make this car road legal again. So it has officially become the donor for the Domino's Pizza DXP car. But what happens in most cases after a car is flooded, is they're deemed a total loss by their insurance company and they're issued a salvage or rebuildable title. On Copart's website, out of 13,439 total flood cars, over 9,000 of them have a salvage rebuildable title. A salvage flood title was issued to this 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now this car, was sent in to me by a viewer named Billy. Billy was the previous owner of this car and lost it in Hurricane Harvey. Now in a few moments, I'm gonna show you the actual photos of this car when it was in Billy's possession. But here at Copart, it looks like pretty much every other flood car. As far as the information goes, it tells us it's an enhanced vehicle. All that enhanced means is that there may or may not have been a cleaning service performed to it. And on some of the really wet flood cars, they might wet vac these cars a little bit. Sometimes they stick in a moisture absorbing packet. Besides that, there's not a whole lot more that's done. Now this car doesn't tell us that it runs or drives. That doesn't necessarily mean that from Copart's lot, it wouldn't run and drive. A lot of these flood cars are as is and they're untested as to not damage anything mechanically if the car were to be started and there were water in the engine transmission anything like that. Now if we take a look at the photos on Billy's Jeep, it looks like a typical flood car. Besides a few wrinkles on the seat, which could be either flood related or they could just be normal wrinkles. Here's the engine bay, which again, there's nothing rusty, nothing strange looking about it. When we look at the gauge cluster, it's not functioning. Most modern cars, the gauge cluster will power on even if the keys aren't in it when somebody opens the door. This could be a dead battery or it could be a major electrical issue. There's nothing that really stands out here. This is pretty much a typical flood car. So when we take a look at these photos that we realize what this car really went through during Hurricane Harvey. I hope these pictures gave you a good visual of what these cars do go through in a flood. It's very serious and while they look amazing in the auction photos and they sell for a really cheap price, these cars can have some very serious issues, especially issues that can creep up over time. Now what happens from here? Depending on how severe the flood was and how the car reacted to the flood, is either going to be parted out like I'm doing with the donor spark or it could be bought and reused. In a lot of cases, dealerships are looking to buy these cars make them look and feel as close to new as possible and sell them for a profit. And that's exactly what happened with Billy's Jeep. We see here that it's sold on eBay for $15,800 from a seller who has a 99.9% .9 positive feedback rating. Let's check that out really quick. They've only got one negative feedback in the past 12 months and it was on a car. It says nice car, but there were some things not disclosed. And as I'm about to show you right now, I have a feeling that they don't disclose a few things on most of their cars. Checking out the photos again, it looks great. They've cleaned it up even further from the auction listing and everything seems to be working just fine with the exception of the airbag light on the dashboard while the car is running. We see the tachometer here is at about eight, 900 RPM, that's idling. Right here where it explains exactly why the car has a rebuilt title, it says we didn't have to do anything to this Jeep, but changing the fluids. I think they meant change the fluids. No evidence of water in the vehicle or in any other components. But let's give these sellers the benefit of the doubt. They weren't Billy. They didn't own the car when it was completely flooded. But to say that there were no signs of water in the car at all is a bit of a stretch, don't you think? If I open up the interior to this flooded Chevy Spark, 
you can see on the floors that they're extremely dirty. Now this car in general was dirty, but as you saw in the photo that Billy took here, these floodwaters are not crystal clear. They're almost mucky and dirty. And that muck and dirt brings in a lot of grass, a lot of sediment from the ground, and leaves it in the interior of the car. Hence how you could see that water line that I showed you earlier. In the case of this flooded Chevy Spark, it even left a ton of leaves and grass in the undercovers of the car, as you can see right here, and there was a lot more that I've already knocked out and kind of blown out of the barn here. Then it goes on to say that there's an SRS light on, but it doesn't affect any functionality of anything. Something I fear about this Jeep, and obviously it's a taller car than this Chevy Spark, but water got, let's say around here, to the bottom of the center console, bottom of the electric seats, and what's located in the lower side of most cars is the SRS module. That's what controls all of the airbags and all of the seatbelts. The other low SRS items in these cars are harnesses for your seat, airbags, and also seatbelt anchors. Any number of those components could not be working properly and in an accident leave you with a dangerous car. Now in Billy's original email, he mentions that he got a message from Jeep regarding the SRS light. What I think Billy means here is that a lot of these new cars have automatic maintenance warnings in them where they'll actually email you if a light turns on in your car or if it's due for an upcoming service. I know my 2015 Ford Fiesta does that as well. So following the flood, clearly there was some issue with the airbag system in this car. Now what's surprising to me is that this car was issued a rebuild title with the airbag lights still on. As I've told you guys many times before, the number one thing that is checked when I go in for rebuild inspection is that the airbag light is shut off. They don't care if you got a check engine light, a tire pressure light, an ABS light. You will not fail an inspection for that. You will fail an inspection if your airbag light is on. So something that stands out there. What's even more interesting is when we check out their other cars for sale. This is obviously a dealership. Here in Florida, they have a lot of different cars for sale. Let's take this Honda van, for example. If we go through and we look here, what does it say? Reason for Florida rebuild title. Again, same thing. We did not have to do anything to this Odyssey besides change the oil with premium synthetic oil. No issues when we got it. It was running great. No evidence of water. Wow, they got two cars in a row. How about this Acura MDX? We look at it and what does it say? We have replaced fluids, no evidence of water. Wow, this dealership is buying all the flood cars in the world that didn't really have any water get into them. Amazing, well, we know water got into Billy's Jeep. Here's the photo again. Water rose pretty decently high, at least high enough to take out maybe the knee airbag or one of the seatbelt anchors. Again, something I don't know for a fact. But what we do know is that flood cars typically aren't deemed a total loss because there were no signs of water anywhere. Now this dealership is selling a handful of cars and all of them but one on their eBay site are flood cars. And all of the flood cars but one state that there were no signs of water anywhere. The other one says that there was a little bit of water that was cleaned up and dried out. If you want to check them out, I've listed the link in the description box below. Maybe you want to shop them for your next car. Now, all kidding aside, it's unfortunate because it's this sort of dishonesty that's prevalent in the automotive industry. It makes us as consumers tough to trust a smaller dealership like this to actually buy a car from. Sometimes we'll try and justify buying something because it's inexpensive, even though the story doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I've definitely been guilty about that, but I wanna specifically thank Billy for sending us in his story, as it's pretty much exposed how some of these resellers operate by just being dishonest to sell something and profit from it. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you not only learned something, but enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions for me whatsoever, want me to check out an auction link, be sure you email me. Everything you need to do to reach me is in the description box below. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching, and I will catch you very soon.